Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome to episode 135, 155, that's it, 155. So, uh, yes, uh, by popular request, we are going to do part two of the grass dragon meditation. And this time I'd like to slow it way down and really get into what makes this work. Actually, the, the nuts and bolts of the alchemy of the, uh, of the process here. Because it's, uh, you know, we can just do it as an exercise and it's kind of cool. But if you can understand, at least in part, some of the energetic uh, elements of the, of the process, it enhances it even more. So the um, grass dragon is a, um, it's a meditation that is part of, uh, it's part of the Bagua tradition. And uh, it is a, um, uh, there are like three dragons in the, in the Bagua tradition that, at least in this meditation. And um, this one is characterized because it's very um, grounded. It's a very deep, and the, um, the image that one should have with is like kind of like like a crocodile, as the way it was explained to me. It's like you know, very low to the ground, very directed energy, and um, so that's the you know, that kind of a very focused kind of energy. Um, it um, one of the, the the big parts of it is the. Um, the, the, unlike so much of Bagua, where there's a lot of spinal twisting going on, this is not like that. It's more like Taiji Chuan in that the, the whole torso is moving as a unit in unison with the hips. So whenever we're turning, rather than this twist that, that is characteristic of so much of Bagua, this is everything is moving as a unit. And um, it is centered around the tail and uh, the tail of the dragon. So you want to envision a big honking dragon tail coming where, out where your coccyx is and you're, we're going to be wagging our tails. And the reason for this is that the coccyx is right in the area of two really important points that uh, the, the first point on the conception vessel or the renma, uh, which is the huiyin, which is between the anus and the genitals at the um, perineum. Very important point, like the most yin point in the torso. And it feeds the, the uh, yin energy of the, of the body. And it, it integrates the energy from the legs coming up from the earth and, and with the torso, very important point. The, on the other side of the anus, uh, just inside or between the anus and the uh, and the coccyx, the tailbone, is the duwan, which is the um, uh, the governing vessel, and this is a point which is um, it connects up with the baihui at the top of the head, the the meeting point of a hundred yangs. The hui yin, is me, by the way, is the meeting point of a hundred, a hundred yins is the, is the meaning of that. Anyway, so that, what that does is it allows the energy to go from, from the earth up through the spine, up into the brain. And so what, it, it, what we're doing when we connect these points up here is we're balancing yin and yang. And we are also bringing this vitality 
to up it, it nourishes your kidney chi, brings it up, and it then feeds your brain. And so it is uh, considered to be very important for brain health. And so uh, allows for, you know, the characteristic slowing down of one's mental functions as one gets older, you know, it slows that down so that you are able to to remain very alert and and have uh, good powers of cognition uh, into your dotage. So we're, we're connecting up these uh, the conception vessel and the governing vessel, which is what we'll look at when we're doing our mic microcosmic orbit, which we've done here a few times. And these uh, are these two major channels that feed all the other channels, which then feed the, the meridians. So they're like reservoirs of chi, which regulate the chi throughout the body. Whenever we have a whole bunch of, of energy circulating in these channels, then there is a tendency toward longevity and good health as well as you know good brain function and lots of lots of lots of juice to be able to do, do cool stuff so we're wagging our tails so as to to activate these two points your ren one and your do one and um, when you're doing that so we're we're connecting those up to and I said before how the, the torso moves as a unit in this one. And we're going to be using, we're going to be um, connecting up with points on the bladder meridian. And you don't have to remember any of this stuff. I'm just giving it as a way of kind of like letting you know the, um, you know, the chemistry behind all this, why this is, why this is such a uh, really, important uh, uh, alchemical process. And so we want to, to be able to do that. So the, uh, at the, right here at the, at the uh, top of your, um, just above your shoulder blades, about maybe an inch from on either side of the spine. So kind of reach back there, just kind of press in. And so we're, it's your upper back above, just above your shoulder blades very close to the uh, to the spine so so what we have here is the inner inner uh, channel of the uh, of the bladder meridian there's two of, two of those uh, on either side of the of the spine this one here is bladder 11 the um, gushu and it's a uh, dashu dashu and uh, bladder 11 anyway so that's one of, we're making contact with that the other one here is Whenever you're uh, you're down here, right at the at where your sacrum, uh, at the bottom of your sacrum, just kind of press in there, and uh, that is your Bai Huan Shu, which is bladder thirty. So where you want to feel it, kind of press in that, and you may notice, you know, if you press in, you might notice there's some uh, tenderness there, maybe or something. It's a and uh, kind of let you know you're in the, in the vicinity. So what we're doing is we're connecting up bladder 11, bladder 30. And this is a, a, a something that you, you kind of bring your mind, your conscious mind into. You say, oh, that's what that is. You're locating. It's kind of like your conscious mind is a guide. It says, hey, over here, this is where they are. And then the guide goes away because now you are you know, you and those points are, it's kind of like quantum entanglement. You kind of, you've got, when you bring your conscious awareness to these points, you're entangled. You're, you're, uh, you don't have to think about it. In fact, it's better that you don't think about it. You just want to feel them and let that go. You Because you've now kind of planted the seed in your superconscious and you're able to, to, okay, good. 
you just want to just have an awareness of moving your scapula and your your hips together the whole torso moving as a unit as whenever we turn so the uh, we're wagging our tails we're going to have that sense of that the tail as the pivot point and then we have this column that is on either side of the spine that the end points are these these points i just showed you so then and that's probably all you need to know about that and just if you do it it works better and um, so there's that there's that so there we have uh the the whole body is is turning as as, as a unit but the uh the hips are going to be doing when we're wagging the tail they're gonna we're gonna making a circle with the uh with the hips so the whenever we're doing it we're wagging this tail here and we're going to go circle up and then down boom so you're you're and then you're wagging that tail over here you're circling up and then down boom and so you're you're creating this kind of figure eight with your butt with your tail and um um so part of the the deal is going to be we're going to nice and slow we're going to kind of get an awareness of that and then we're going to go through it and gradually add on little pieces to this meditation so that we can really get a feeling for what's going on there and we can you know really tune into the uh the substantial aspect of the body the physicality of it but also the insubstantial the energetic part and uh, we get to to do that um so in addition to the other the fun stuff with enhanced vitality and uh, and uh, better brain health and things like that we also have uh, it's great for your spine as we're we're doing this it you're we're activating the meridians along the spine the bladder meridians along the spine and things are moving up we got the uh, we got the um governing vessel that is uh, right there in line with the spine so we're we're connecting all this up and so the chi is moving and so it nourishes the uh, the spine the there are different uh I'll talk to you maybe later about how this influences different organs, but the key to this one is that it kind of undercuts all, all the other kind of healing chi gungs in that it just feeds everybody. It just that kind of gets in at the ground floor of uh, getting your vitality and then which then it's the rising tide lifts all boats theory of of healing it's by enhancing your vitality you're not focusing on on any particular thing you are just getting everybody everybody doing much better um any questions so far let me before we get before we get started particularly from those you might have uh uh done any of this last week anybody okay okay thank you all right so let's uh let's do it Let's begin by activating our three pillars. Really establishing that. So feel the balls of your feet. Allow your, your weight to spread throughout your whole foot, but you're focusing at this point, you're focusing primarily on the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown of your head. 
tuck in your chin. And so when you reach to the crown of your head, your knee one, you're activating that by we I talked about, that, um, that point at the top of your head, which corresponds in, in the yogic tradition with uh, the seventh chakra. But it's a, um, it's a point like the highest yang point in the body. Opening the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Relax your lower back and allow your tailbone, your coccyx, to drop. And then push away from the earth and then spiral down and release your quad, your hip joints. Really want to get that nice and soft. You're sinking down into the earth. Mute with out with the elbows a little bit so your arms are slightly rounded. Point with your index fingers. And rounding, reaching with your elbows opens up the shoulder joints and unkinks the hose there. And feel the energy, because we're in this in position now, we're feeling the balls of the feet, we're getting that yang chi is filling up the, the whole, pumping up the whole system. And since we're in a central equilibrium, we are, we have a really good structure that allows us to be able to use that energy. Be able to allow it to circulate. Just like blowing up a balloon, you get your, your, your whole system gets filled up. And now you want to shift so that your centering on the heels of your foot, but still maintaining that connection, that energetic connection, as well as your structure. So you're not losing any energy by doing it, it's just the energy is going in a different direction now. Instead of yang up and out, this is yin going down and in. So we're sinking into the heels, but maintaining our structure maintaining our central equilibrium. And feel yourself getting more and more committed to sinking into the earth. We're really exploring the yin aspect. Letting go very, very soon. And remember that sung is not just relaxing, it's relaxing into the supporting structure, particularly your connective tissue system. And this allows the chi to flow more freely. Now, Feel the balls of your feet, reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. Reach with the elbows. I'm gonna bring the elbows up to the level of the shoulders and the wrists. So all are they're all together. And you're reaching out with the fingers and the you're spreading the fingers and rounding, rounding the palm, rounding the hands so that you're reaching out as if you have these big dragon claws. And just want to feel into that. You're reaching out with the elbows, opening up the shoulder joints, but you're also opening between your shoulder blades. You want to feel that, that expansiveness. You're opening the back as, well, as you're reaching out here. There's that intention. You got the your you got your dragon claws there, and you're you know you're feeling those in your fingertips, and uh, sink into your heels. Now reach down with the elbows. And if you're getting very in, reach down, sink.
and just feel into the yin. We're dissolving into a state of being and just feeling that in its fullness. Feel your tail, get that dragon tail. You're not moving it yet. You're just feeling it. That extension of your coccyx, imagine it out there behind you. And feel those two sets of points. Your bladder 30, down there at the bottom of your sacrum, and your bladder 11 up there by your shoulder blades, the top of your shoulder blades. You're connecting up these points. We're centering, pivoting on the, the tail, but we're also connecting up these bladder points. We're still in the central equilibrium. We're still in the yin, in the heels. I just feel the energy as it fills up your system. Now, very gently and almost unnoticeably, just get the real sense. You start, you're wagging your tail back and forth so little that no one would even notice. You're feeling that connection. And feel into those points on either side of your anus. Reach up with your uh, the crown of your head. So we're connecting up the bai hui at the top of your head, the hui yin, and going all the way through the feet and into the earth, through the yong tran points. In the foot. So you're just feeling that. A little bigger now. Wag a little bit bigger. You're just wagging back and forth right now. This gentle movement is massaging those points and gently stoking the fire in the, and those two uh, channels, getting the chi activated. Good. Move into the balls of your feet. Reach of the wrists. Feel those fingers reaching out with the fingers, out with the elbows, and then really extending outward, opening the shoulder joints, opening the back. And now we're going to. Continue just to wag that tail back and forth, but reaching out.
And now sink into your right leg as you turn to the left. And sink into your left leg as you turn to the right. Sink into the right leg. Now sink into your right leg and then sink into your left and turn to the right. Sink into your left leg and turn to the left. As you sink, you sink into the left leg and then sink into the right and then turn to the left. So what we're doing here is we're initiating first go left to go right. In other words, if I'm sinking my left leg, then sink into my right and then turn left. Ah, oh, not sinking my right leg and then I go to my left leg and then turn right. Getting that feeling there of that preparation for the movement. So now sink into your left leg. Now sink into your right heel and feel that. Now feel the ball of your right foot and circle your right hip up. Your arms are moving together. Arms, shoulders, are, are back are all one unit. And then you come down and sink into your right leg and then into your left and then circle up with your left. So notice that the left shoulder is a little bit higher than the right and then down and back to center. Left, right, circle up and down. Circle up with your left and down. Left legs into your right heel. Right ball, circle up, and then right heel and down. Still reaching out. Left heel, left ball up, and uh, heel and down. Hands come down. And just take note of the of the energy that's circulating throughout the body mind. Sink in your heels. Feel the chi rising into your brain and nourishing your brain. Feel the circulation throughout your whole, your whole body. Feel that microcirculation as your blood is reaching into cells that are not fed as well as some of the others. To the balls of the feet, hands come up, reach with the wrists. Open, reach with the fingers, open the shoulder blades, and then sink into the heels. And feel into your left heel, sink into your left heel, and allow your right 
shoulder, your right side to come up and you're sinking down into your left hip and then forward and circling. So this time we're circling under and then we circle down right heel, right ball and back to heels. Left heel, sink, down and then left ball, circle up. Right heel, right ball, reach. Back to the heels. Left heel, sink. Left ball. Right heel. Right ball. So the movement is getting initiated from the waist, from the from the yao, actually, from your from your lower back. Left ball, left, your left heel, left ball, right heel, right ball. Sink into your heels and elbows down. Feeling the balls of the feet, each of the wrists, each of the fingers, open your back, open the scapula. And this time, I want you to wag your tail without moving. So first, your right side, wag your tail, Circle, left side, back to center, right side, circle up and down, left side, circle up and down. To neutral, right side circling up and down, left side circling up, down, back to neutral, hands come down. Balls of the feet, reach of the wrists, reach of the fingers, open the back, heels. This time we're going under. We're circling left leg down, circling up without moving. Right circle. Neutral.
left circle under right circle under neutral left circle under wag that tail right circle under Elbows, this sink into your heels. Notice that the more we amplify the yin, the bigger the yang gets. This allows the whole system to be able to handle, to um, circulate more energy, tapping into the big chi, allowing it to flow through you without internal resistance. Good, I feel the Take into the heel of your right foot, step in with the left, feel both heels. Feel the yin. Take a deep breath, go into the balls of your feet, gather young, expansive, big, big G. Yield, exhale, throw it all away, dissolve. Please take a seat. Mm. <sighs> How'd that go? <laughs> Did anybody have any uh, questions? Any clarifications needed? Jonathan. So when we do, um, you know, central equilibrium and all that, we there's a yin as far as releasing down into the earth it, to the extent of the body, but the vector keeps going below the beyond the body, and that seems rather yang to me. And I'm just wondering, you know, yin yang there. What's how do you see that? You're saying it the the, the vector going down feels young to you? Well, I mean, the vector, insofar as we're releasing within the body, it's all yin. It's all just a release. I feel that. But if I think about it in terms of going through the earth and beyond, it seems to become yang again, like picks up at the bottom of the foot. You mean in China? And it's like a yang thing rather than a yin thing. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, go, go, go to the foot, it's and, uh, access the other side. I, I guess uh, I'd say I want I want whatever you've been smoking because that, that <laughs> uh, you got much bigger than I did. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but you know, I mean, it, it is it is a vector. We're we're going beyond our body. When even when we do yang, we're going out, and you know, it's it doesn't just stop right there. 
there's a feeling of it going out. And that's no problem because that's young and it's a young move. But once you talk about yin, that's I totally fine. Get what you're to the point. I, okay. I, I totally get what you're saying. So yin and yang is always with reference to what? Substantial and insubstantial, <laughs> with reference to what? So with reference right. to my body, what direction is the energy going? Is, is it going up and out or down and in? You know, and that's right. the, the simplicity of yin and yang for me is, is in that. There's lots of, I mean, there's a hundred thousand ways to talk about it, but it, it, at its core is it, it's expansion and contracting. It's, it's, if it's expanding, right. it's yang. If it's, it's, it's contracting, it's yin. Right. So it's going down with reference to my body. That's a, a yin flow. But that's just a right. name. That just, that's something that I can, I can call it a banana split, you know. And uh, if, as long as the feeling of it, the phenomenon itself, we, as long as we agree to the term, it, it doesn't matter what I call it. So it's not an absolute yin or yang. It's with reference to what? Does that make sense? Right, yes. So change the reference and it changes what we're talking about. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're, you know, if you're, if we're talking about, okay, we're, we're saying that it's in a uh, zero G environment where there is no up and down, then, then we can say, okay, it's, it doesn't matter w which direction you're going. So everything is, is it's, it, then it's like in and out. It's like, is it going into the body or is it going out at that point? Because that's our, right. our frame of reference in that. But since right. uh, most of us are, are operating here in the, you know, with the, with the gravity situation. So, and, you know, so we have this, the, the two poles are heaven and earth. And then we get, okay, then we can, we can orient to that. It's like a GPS. Valerina. Well, I understand what, I think I understand what Jonathan is referencing. My feeling is that as you're going down, 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 yes, there is an expansiveness, but it is more substantial. It's a more, it's a, it's a vastness because the earth is freaking big. Right. So it does expand out, but it's got that entirely different for me, different feel than when I'm going upward. So there's, like mm -hmm. I said, you know, that substantialness of the whole planet. Um, mm -hmm. But I get what he's he's talking about, that expansiveness, but it's a different feel for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I agree. As, as a quality, the yin as a moving toward greater density toward as you say more substantiality and the yang chi is more expansive so it is becoming less dense so then you know it's more insubstantial in that respect i, I think he uh, i think he reached all the way through the earth and connected up to the sky on the other side i'm saying i i, 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 want, I want i want whatever he's got you know <laughs> much bigger than i got <laughs> <laughs> is that mineral water okay <laughs> oh, mineral water yeah well, to... <laughs> uh, yeah uh valerina um much like last week i experienced say the uh, energy the feeling in my hands was very distinct um the Yang energy, I always feel almost like not my skin is going to pop, but hot and big and very full. Whereas being in the yin after this particular exercise, still very full, but more internally full, if that makes any sense, rather than just my fingers just pulsing. It's, it's very, very much in there, but it's not that pulsing going to bust out kind of feeling. It's uh, the iron wrapped in cotton. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, one way, yeah, one parallel, it's not at all um, 
scientifically accurate, but one way of thinking about it is to think of the yang qi as electrical and the yin qi as magnetic. And to kind of get that, 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 that sense of, you know, the, the yang qi being kind of crackly and bubbly and zappy and, and the yin qi being like cohering and, and creating this substantiality. So that's one way of thinking about it, but it's not, you know, it's not the same, but it's there, it's a parallel. Scott. Uh, that was very helpful. That that uh, visualization actually is quite helpful. Oh, good. Um, as soon as you, as soon as we got to focus on my tailbone, uh, it felt like I sat on a fire hydrant. <laughs> and just, and every time, and through the whole meditation, anytime I focused on my tailbone, it was just like, just whoosh. I mean, just really, really cool. a lot. A lot. Yeah. Really, yeah, a lot, which was really interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot going in there. It's not just the Renma and the Duma, there's also the penetrating vessel, which shoots up along the spine there and, and up into the, uh, up into the brain. So it's a, there's a whole bunch and it kind of parallels to what uh, in the yogic tradition, they talk about Kundalini energy. Yeah. It's kind of similar to that. And, and well, I don't want to, I don't want to say that the same thing because, you know, I'm not an expert in, at, at that, but I'm saying that there, from what I've read, there's, there's, there's a similar kind of idea. They, you know, the penetrating vessel is very similar to the, uh, uh, the Sushumna uh, uh, and, and the uh, and the, the Sushumna Nada Sushumna, I don't think, yeah, Sushumna in, uh, in in the in the yoga tradition. But anyway, that uh, so that that stuff you're talking about there, there's it's a lot, lot of juice. Good. Good. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I mentioned last week about different, depending on where you focus, it addresses different organs. So if you imagine like the top part of your back is, um, relates to the, the lungs, just below that at the level of the heart is the heart organs. And then at the level of the, uh, 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 we got at the level of the diaphragm, we have the liver, just below that is the spleen, and just below, below that you get the kidney. So this feeds all of them, but it also, you can enhance you know, one, you know, one of the areas if you like, uh, if you feel are feeling deficient in say your spleen chi. You know, you feel okay. I, you um, you can focus on that part as you're moving, and uh, when I say focus, it's the same way we're focusing on the points. You kind of get the idea and then let it go. And just a word on that: whenever we get the idea and let it go, it's like what we're doing is we're creating this. Just by identifying these things, we're creating substantiality for those points. We're saying, of all the many, many points in the body, all the you know, many places my mind can go, I can't go to all of them at once. I'm going to focus on this, this, because I can only ha handle this much information at a time with my conscious mind. And then I say, okay, introduce, I introduce myself to those points. We shake hands, and then we, we've, we're entering into an operation together, an agreement. There's a partnership going on, and we do, we do that. And I don't have to think about those points. Same thing with the tail. I feel it, but I don't. I'm not thinking tail all the time. But I remind myself every now and then, just because it's an it's not a natural thing for me to 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 wag my tail like that. But you know, it. Uh, I, I go back to it and say, oh yeah, the tail. I remember now. So we get to go back to that. 
Cool. Um, any other questions, thoughts? Okay. Oh, Jonathan, you have one? I have a thought. Uh, I guess we're sharing. Um, you know, this business of move but don't move, we do a lot. I guess it's like each one is a lot about that. Yeah. And there's that amazing picture of Fuqui that, that Don Miller had in one of his calendars where he looks like that's what he's doing. He's full of movement, but he's not moving kind of thing. Right. Um, it, it, it's speculation, but from the accounts of NDE, a sense of a body leaves the body when we die, but it's not our body. Our body is left here. And it almost, it seems like we're gathering, <laughs> we're having a pre sense of what that might be like, because it's like we're connected to the body, but we're not connected. You know, it's, it's, it's both at once. So it's, that's pretty cool stuff. I wonder if it's not a very deep practice, ultimately, this idea of moving, but not what you're feeling as a body when you're not moving your body, but telling yourself to move your body. That state, I think, might be pretty deep and profound. Just throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, uh, I agree. It, it's something that needs more exploration. Uh, one thing that, you know, one way of talking about that, that process, what we're doing when we're, we're doing this is we're enhancing our Wei Qi, which may be along the lines of, you know, it establishes your Wei Qi is your external Qi. So that is once your, your energy has reach a point where you, you're, you're full. And if the mm. energy is highly coherent, then you start mm. to reach. The energy mm. goes, radiates mm. outward from you. And, and so it creates kind of a force field around you that yes. they say the yes. weight wards off pernicious influences because it kind of filters your, the, the bad juju as it's as it's trying to trying to attack you. So you know it's a, another way of of you know talking about an insubstantial uh, uh, immune system. You know <laughs> it's like it's a, an immune system that goes beyond the uh, uh, the 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 antibodies and and into a an energetic force field that 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 is high. So. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of palpable when we're doing an exercise like this is that sense of, of energy field. The density of your field gets more substantial and therefore it has uh, uh, it, it more noticeable. And other people's energy fields become more noticeable also. And you kind of, you're mingling energy fields whenever you, whenever you meet and things like that so and then that takes us to a whole new whole new level of uh operation yes very much so cool well thank you all so much it's been a lot of fun really appreciate it see you next so, time bye-bye have a good week